Hey everyone, Sean Frangelli here with a new Cinema 4D video about the new take system in R17. So the new take system and way of working is one of the biggest updates to Cinema 4D R17. It allows you to create multiple variations of the same animation materials or settings in one project file and then render it out all separately. It's a really big feature. It's gonna change the way you work and simplify things a lot if you're doing variations of one system of animation or project file. So let's dive right into Cinema 4D and take a look at what I'm talking about. So here we are in R17 and I got this basic little setup to talk about this. I got floor, a cloner with some cubes, this sphere, and I got a couple dynamics tags because I want to talk about how we can use this to set up different animation options in our takes as well as make changes to things like materials and then render out all of those options quickly and easily from our same file. So this could be any animation or anything, but this will be a good little example. So say that this is my base scene and then I wanna do some different options of this sphere running into this pile of cubes to get different simulations, as well as maybe change out some of the materials and the background all in the same file. So now if we look at our takes menu over here, which is below our object, it's this new panel and we have our takes. So our main take right here is our base scene. Now, once I wanna start making new takes to see different options for my animation, I'll click this new take button. And if I go back to anything in my object manager, it's all grayed out. So what I wanna do is go to takes and I can turn on this auto take and that's gonna record any changes I make similar to auto keying down here. Now, if I go to my objects, I'll grab my sphere and we can see everything is blue, which means it's recording this as a new take. And then I'm just gonna grab my sphere and I'll check on only position and I'll make a new keyframe for position. And then I'll go ahead in time and just move this to where it's gonna run into this pile of cubes. And I'll make another keyframe. So I got this little animation of this sphere moving, which has a collider tag on it. And now if I play, it's gonna knock the boxes down and I get this nice little animation. If I do a quick area render, this is what my scene looks like. Now, maybe that's good, but I wanna try another option without having to create a new file or layers and clutter things up. What I can do is I'll go to takes and now I have that take that I've just made and I can make another take. So I'll do again, new take and it's gonna base that off my main animation. As you can see, there's this little hierarchy. So now those keyframes that I just made are gone because they were saved in that take. And now I can do something else. So let's have it go from the side and I'll make a keyframe go ahead, have it knock these down again. And we have this different option for my animation. So it's knocking them from the side. And now if I go to my takes menu, this is my second take here. If I go to my first take, there's my original animation. And if I go to main, there's my base scene of the sphere not moving yet. So I can start to name these. I'll call this take one, take two, and I can hop into them the same as looking through different cameras with this little button. And what it's doing over here is recording every change I make to the attribute menu. So it's important to note that the take system works with our attributes and records any change you make here in this new take system. And this applies to a lot of things. So if I wanted to change this floor material, I can go back to my main and it's good to note that I want to get back in my main take if I'm going to start adding new stuff, because if I, wasn't in my main take, say I'm in take one, and I make a new material and jump into this. You can see everything's blue because it's recording it as part of that take. So let's go to our takes. I'll go to my main take, and then I'll make a new material, call this floor two, make this red, and I'm gonna go to takes again, and now I'll make a new take to change out the floor and maybe change a few other things. So I'll go again, new take, I got auto take on, I'll call this take three. And what I'm gonna do here is change out all the material. So I'll go to my plane here and swap that out to red by holding command. Let's make our cloner system this reflective material. And let's make our sphere this blue material that was our floor. And let's even go to our physical sky that I got set up here. And we'll change the time to get different lighting. So now I got this morning light, totally different looking scene than I had before. Got some cool long shadows. And again, let's just make a quick little animation with this sphere. So I'll move this over here, make a keyframe, have it come in from this side. And then we got our little simulation. 
If I do a quick area render, that's what we're looking at in our scene. And all of those changes are stored in my take. If I look at my takes menu and take three, you can see now all these new options are there. And if I wanna get back to my original scene, I can just cycle through my takes by going to main and look at that. There is my original scene. There's my different takes and there's my third take with everything changed. So you could do a lot with this to really clean up your workflow and do everything in one file. It's one of the biggest changes of R17 and it's really gonna help if you're trying out different animation options or you need to render out different examples. So now that we did all this, let's say we need to render these out. What we can do is go to render in our takes menu and render all takes to picture viewer. And if I click that, it gives me this warning. The document contains simulations, which is fine because there's nothing crazy going on, but I could bake those in if I want. And then it's basically going to go through and render out all my takes. Now I'll just do file stop rendering because before rendering, I want to point out one new thing of how this is really set up to work efficiently and quickly. So we're making all these takes. You probably want to save all this somewhere. Well, where the hell do these go? Now, if we go to our render settings and we look at save, we normally save our file. So let's just do PNG save. We're saving this as a PNG sequence. So I'd locate where I'm going to save it to, and I got this renders set up. So I'll do sphere render, but I want multiple takes. Well, to deal with that now, there's this little click down and you can basically create variables for each of these for things like takes. So let's actually click this current takes. And now you can see it adds this render dollar sign take and holy shit, that's going to render out each of these with a number of our variable. So now if I again, go to render in my takes and do render all takes to picture viewer, it's going to render each of these out as render, take one, take two, take three. And then if I look in that renders folder here, it's rendered those out all separately. So if I want to do the whole animation, I could just do output all frames again, render all takes. It'll give me my overwrite notice. Cause I just saved those. That's fine. And then it's going to start saving the entire take out to this folder. And I can just walk away and it's going to render out all of these. And this is huge. If you're doing something like a project that needs to have different options rendered out. And I actually had a project like this come up where I had to render out a bunch of different dynamic simulations. And this is what our project folder ends up looking like because you need all of these simulations in different files. And if you make a change, you got to make it in every file. Well, no longer do we have to do this. You can have one main file do multiple takes and it's all stored in the same file. So this, so our take system is a really big new feature in Cinema 4D R17. I definitely felt like I needed to set up a whole separate video for it. And if you want to learn more about other new features of R17, you can check out my other videos on things like the Metaball updates, the variation material, and all sorts of new updates by clicking on those thumbnails. And if you have questions on this new feature or want to let me know about new features you want to hear more about, you can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and you can hashtag those R17 and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more Cinema 4D After Effects and motion graphics videos. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.